The Saab Jazz 39 Gripen in 32nd scale. Improving the old Ravale kit in 32 scale the kit brand Ravale Germany released a plastic model kit of the Saab Jazz 39 Gripen some 30 years ago. It is until now the only Gripen in this modeling scale but has large inaccuracies. This modeling video will show how the kit can be made into a far better model. But first some information about the real Gripen the JAS-39 Gripen is a modern fighter developed by Saab of Sweden as replacement of the Saab Viggen and Draken. The Gripen has a single Volvo RM12 engine, delta wing and canards and has a top speed of Mach 2. It is relatively small but can carry many different weapons on under-wing pylons. It is fully fly-by-wire. First flight was in 1988 and it came into the Swedish Air Force Service in 1997 known as Gripen A and the unarmed two-seater B. The Gripen C is a NATO-compatible aircraft and can use advanced weaponry. The two-seater is designated Gripen D. Several Gripens were also sold many years later for export to Czechia, South Africa, Hungary and Thailand. Over 250 first-generation Gripens have been built. I saw first-generation Gripens at various European air shows. A new version is the JAS 39E which is in fact a much newer generation aircraft. It has more advanced systems, a single-screen cockpit, more fuel capability, extra pylons and the new main gear also retracts in the wing and fuselage. Sweden and Brazil have ordered the type for their air forces. The Ravale Germany 32 scale kit of the Saab JAS 39 Gripen was released way back in 1991. The kit numbered 4752 has about 125 parts and contained also a sort of engine, an entry ladder and stores like missiles and fuel tanks. The kit decals are for what seems to be a prototype. The kit instructions are simple but clear. I had seen some models built over the years and the kit shapes simply did not look right as the models seemed to be to be too compact. But at that time the new Gripen was still quite secret and not a lot of the details were known. A few decades later, I examined a bit further if the model could be improved. A big trigger was that the small 72 scale Ravale kit of the Gripen Jazz 39C was released in 2014. The outlines of this kit seem to be quite accurate and could be used to check the old larger scale kit. A first checkup over the years later I started to gather information about the real Gripen and looked for several layout drawings though we all know one has to be careful with these. Having a few, Jane's All the World Aircraft, books, the invaluable reference source for aviation professionals, some data was compared. Some drawings were scaled up to 32 scale. One has to take particularly into account the length of the pitted tube on the nose. Some bigger parts of the Ravale kit were separated from their sprues. These were checked with the drawings. Fuselage it was measured as well and it seemed further investigation I tried to find out what may have caused the dimensional inaccuracies in the old Ravale kit. Now I saw something interesting. The Jane's All the World Aircraft data from 1988 till 1993 in this adds up to the length correction of about 21 millimeters and wingspan correction of 2 times 5 millimeters i concluded that the ravale kit team at the time forgot about the pitted tube length and missile rails the team assumed this to be included in the overall grip and span and length dimensions as stated by the jane's data and probably in saab promotion documentation when making their molds more details about the measurements and the kit can be found on my modeling website. Improving the fuselage The fuselage kit is about 21 mm too small in total length. When cuts are made and card is used to close GPAS, parts can be shifted to get the 32 scaled required 17 mm fuselage extension between nose section and rear fuselage. The upper rear fuselage can be kept as per kit and will be used to install the vertical tail and improved exhaust later on. Of these 21 mm, the cockpit sill should be 4 mm longer and thus unfortunately a longer clear canopy is needed. To increase the lower fuselage half length a cut was made slightly in front of the molded nose gear bay and a cut in front of the main gear bay opening. 
The lengthening of the fuselage affects the landing gear obviously. The prepared and modified forward fuselage pieces were joined inserting bended plastic card to get the required plugs of appropriate length. Lots of putty using car filler and a lot of sanding were needed. The wing modification The wing span needs an extra 32 scaled about 2 times 5 mm span increase at the rear including the inboard trailing edge flap at each side. Total wing span increase is 10 mm. More details about the measurements and the kit can be found on my modeling website. The inaccurate missile wing tip rails were separated with a razor saw. The inboard flaps were also separated but the wing ailerons looked good enough so were not changed. The wing root inserts will be made with plastic card and putty. Inside, thick strips were glued. All was aligned with the upper fuselage to keep any ridges and curves as limited as possible. It looked already much better now. Now we go to the vertical tail of the Gripen. This vertical tail itself needs an height increase at the lower base by 3 mm and at fin top by about 2 mm, so total increment 5 mm. With a razor saw, several cuts were thus made. For the increased height, a few strips of card were used. The rudder will also be enlarged with card. It was decided not to change the vertical tail fairings, though not 100% accurate but good enough. The main gear bays for the corrected main bay opening shapes. A piece of curved card insert was made to fit. This way, the main closed doors will be virtually lengthened 10 millimeters. New doors were also made from card. Card was installed at the upper spine. The spine insert here is again on top the 17 millimeters in 32 scale. Now a lot of putty and sanding is needed. But this will get a far better shaped model. Each intake upper corner near the canard station should be a bit more curved. Sanding was done. Be careful here as the plastic is thin. At the wing kink, leading edge aft of the canard station it was found a small extension was needed as seen on real grippins. I found a bit too late that the lower gun fairing needs to be lengthened in the middle by about 12 mm and relocated as well. So the kit shape was cut off horizontally with a razor saw. Card and putty closed all up. The inboard flaps are still separate parts. They will also be used to suggest a slightly better trailing edge angle as I had to rotate a bit the wing planform. Measuring and dry fitting was done now. The shape of the canards is a good basis but first remove the raised stubs and raised details. Next, add a small tip extension of 3 mm with card. The canards were not yet installed at this stage as they are very vulnerable. It would be nice to have also some pylons and stores. With various drawings and looking at photos, it was found that the 32 scale kit pylons are very inaccurate. I also used the very good 72 scale Ravel kit to further checks. It was clear that when making inserts, sections of the kit pylons can be used. Cuts were made and putty and card used. A replacement for the central pylon was found in the spares box. For the central fuel tank, it needs to be widened with strip of 4 mm wide. All was bended, glued, puttied and sanded. For the wing tip missile rails that had been cut off earlier, some far better ones were found in the spares box and only needed a bit adaption. It was also decided to add an extra forward pylon found in the spares box below the right intake for a lightning pod. The model got a few recessed panel lines with the Olfa panel scriber. But I did not add many as large areas are puttied and not to spoil the surface appearance. Most corrections were done and an important build milestone was reached. The overall model could now get a base gray primer coat to see any flaws in the puttied areas. I airbrushed the acrylic paint Ravel Aqua No. 75 called Steingrau. check was made with the photo camera with the scale drawing. A few photos were made, from a far distance to avoid camera lens distortion as much as possible. Some work is still be done with the windshield and removing 1mm on top of the fin. Scheme in Air Force to pick. 
My longtime modeling friend Irwin persuaded me to make this model in a South Africa Air Force scheme and provided some documentation and photos. Some 17 Saab JAS-39C and 9 Dual D Gripen fighters were acquired. The South Africa Air Force accepted its first Gripen D-2 seater in April 2008 and the final two Gripen D aircraft arrived in South Africa in July 2009. The first two Gripen C single-seat fighters arrived February 2010 with deliveries ongoing to October 2011. The No. 2 Squadron based at Makato Air Force Base near the town of Lewis Tricart in the north of South Africa operates all the Gripens except for the first Gripen D, which is assigned to the Test Flight and Development Center at Overberg. As of today, these Gripens are probably stored due top lack of pilots and poor serviceability. Photos were studied for the scheme. Also, custom-made decals with low-visibility South Africa Air Force markings and flag would be needed. I designed the 32-scale decals with a graphics program on the PC and the decals were custom laser printed on decal paper with an Oki printer. Apparently, the specified colors and scheme when the Gripens were ordered were not followed by Saab for unclear reasons. It seems that the actual colors of the South Africa Air Force Gripens are approximately an overall scheme of federal standard paint coated FS 36320 Ghost Gray and the diamond in FS 36118 Dark Gray. Also, the fake canopy below the nose was airbrushed dark gray. The paint brand Gun Songyo acrylic colors were airbrushed, but any paint brand will do for these federal standard colors. All airbrushing was done with my fine double action harder and Steinbeck airbrush. A few basic weathering effects with black patterns were airbrushed first for any recessed panel lines. We can now go to detailing the model and other bits. As the cockpit sill had been increased 4 mm in length the canopy should be increased in length. The proportions will then also look like seen on the real Gripen. The approach chosen was to shave off any raised kit canopy details. Frames of 2 mm each at the rear and front edges will be added from bended card strips to get the increased lengths. So the raised frames are now removed, hidden and then polished a lot. The interior of the canopy framing was made from scrap with card looking at photos. This canopy is turned open to the left, there is a strength bar aft of the seat. Also, I saw rather wide edges at the canopy front with the mirrors almost being invisible when seen from the front. The mirrors were cut from metal sheet. The windscreen was placed in position but it did not look good. It seemed that the steep angle was a bit too much. To make sure, another overall model side view photo was made from long distance to avoid camera lens distortion. I concluded that the windscreen should still be set about 2 mm more forward and tilted a bit to get a less steep angle. I removed some plastic at the rear area of the windscreen mating surface and the gaps were closed with putty and then sanded. An upper view photo was made from a large distance to do a check. In upper plan view the model looks quite good. The span is correct with a better leading edge sweep. The trailing edge angle and wing cord at the ailerons deviate as expected a bit as the wing planform was rotated but this is not obvious when looking at the model. The kit cockpit parts are unusable. Rayvale did not have the information as the Gripen was still highly secret in 1991. Recent cockpit photos were used and the overall impression is that the Gripen has a rather clean cockpit layout. The main instrument panel has three large CRT displays and a few clocks only. The panel was made from scrap. The basic interior color is probably federal standard color coded FS 36320 with black details and black internal canopy frames. The rear avionics boxes needed new scratch replacements. Ejection seat for the Gripen MK.10 SL ejection seat. I used a 32 scale Kitty Hawk Mirage 2000 MK.10 seat. A seat harness was added made from tape etched metal buckles from the spares box. The main color was black with olive green parapack and details in some other colors. Landing gears take some rework. On most parked Gripens the big main gear doors are in the closed position. A few small curved gear doors were made from card. The gear bays and door insides are mainly white. 
The main gear struts from the kit were measured and checked with photos. Those from the kit are not that bad at all and have the correct angles and dimensions. The two small diameter kit wheels were replaced by new armory resin wheels from their set AW32503. The main wheels are 20 mm diameter and the nose wheels 11 mm. Just a tiny bit too small, but better than the kit wheels. The real grip and gear track is 2, 4 meters or 77 mm in 32 and the main legs were installed in the correct positions. In the main bays, some details were added like the hydraulic lines using JMC lead wire that can be bended and twisted easily. The kit nose wheel strut parts can be used as well. Again, to my surprise, detailing was done with wire and sprue. Setting the strut in the nose bay was checked with the real Gripen wheelbase which is 162 mm in 32 scale. Inside the repositioned bay, smaller bits were added to have the extra detail. Various lights, antennas and other bits the landing lights set on the gear struts were made from scrap. The kit exhaust part can be used but it is molded in the closed setting. I wanted an open exhaust and had found something earlier in the spares box that could be used. The exhaust was airbrushed in a few coats of Alclad burned metal. The insides were painted burned white with oil paint. The pair of canards were set in place. They have a bit angle upwards and were set at slight rotated tilt. On parked grippens, their orientation varies. Photos on the internet and in books showed that the South Africa Air Force Grippens can carry in theory a large variety of stores. It is unclear if these were all delivered due to high costs. I saw on photos Iris T missiles though on the wing tip rails. These missiles came from the 32 scale Ravale Eurofighter kit. South Africa Air Force Gripens are sometimes seen flying with probably sort of Mark 80 series bombs with short fuse. These are probably Mark 82, dumb training bombs. The bombs were found in the 32 scale Trumpeter A7 Corsair II kit. The needed bomb carrying Alcan twin store carriers were crafted from scrap. A lightning targeting pod was seen as well below the starboard intake. Strangely, I only saw dumb bombs when the pod was installed during training missions. A spare lightning pod was found in the spares box, left over from a 32 scale Tamiya F-15E Strike Eagle kit. The kit ladder parts proved to be quite good in shape. I only added an extra crossbar and that was it. I did not want to fix the ladder, so from tiny metal rod a sort of hook was made to hung it in place. It fits well with the correct proportions as very early the cockpit section of the fuselage had been lengthened and the windscreen was also corrected. I always airbrush a final varnish coat on a model, in this case a semi-gloss coat. This to give the model an even sheen and protects the decals. I airbrushed a mix of my favorite Johnson Future acrylic floor varnish thinned with isopropyl alcohol and some drops of Tamiya Acrylic X21 flat base. This will dull the varnish a bit giving a semi-gloss sheen. The stores were not forgotten and also got a coat and all was set aside to dry. On finals before installing the stores, a few photos were made of a clean model, as the Gripen is often seen flying. After the photos were made, the stores were set in place with super glue, every time just a tiny glue dot is needed. This took an afternoon to set all stores aligned and symmetrical.
That's it. After a four month and a 150 hours effort, this old 32 scale Ravale Gripen, after waiting for 30 years in the loft, has turned out to be a nice model in the collection after all. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit my website to see more than 500 aircraft modeling reports.